Hey coach, welcome back to the channel. This is Leo here from Make Money Coaching Sports. So if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the latest content that we put out. Uh, if you want to get in contact with me to talk about your business, there's two ways you can do that. You can either set up a free 15 to 20 minute discovery call where we jump on Zoom. I ask you a couple of questions with regards to your business, see where you're at, see where you want to get to. And I can show you some actionable steps to take this week to grow and scale what you're doing. If you don't want to do that, then just send me a, an email to makemoneycoachingsports at gmail.com. I make it a mission every single day to respond to coaches who reach out to me with questions about their business and how to grow and scale. Now, what I want to do today is I want to share with you 10 ways to kickstart your soccer coaching business today. Now, the 10 things I'm going to share with you on the screen now are very simple and very basic step-by-step -step, uh, guides, how to get your, your business started, how to gain more experience, right? And what, what things I did when I first started. And if I was to put myself in a situation where I was starting from zero, this is these are the 10 things I would follow step-by-step -step that would help me to, to start my business up and running again okay so i'm gonna try and make this video short because i don't want to go into too much detail and make it very long but make sure you pay attention make sure you take notes and again if you want to get in contact with me get in contact with me those two ways i spoke about at the beginning of this video you can either contact me uh, via email to my email make money coaching sports at gmail.com or you can book a discovery call with me it's a free 15 to 20 minute call we jump on zoom i can ask you some questions about your business see where you're at see where you're in where you want to get to and i can show you some actionable steps to take this week to kickstart your business to the next level okay so 10 ways to kickstart your your business right so if you're a coach watching and you know you've maybe been watching our channel for a while now you want to get started Okay, or, e, or, or you might have one or two clients already and now you want to get to the next level, right? They'll, there's going to be a few things in this, in this video that's really going to help you. They're going to be really beneficial to you and I hope you get value from it. Okay, so the first one is get coaching experience. Now, a lot of coaches ask me on a, on a regular basis, what's more important, uh, having a coaching license that is maybe one of the highest in the industries or having a coaching experience, right? Or having lots of co coaching experience. For me personally, I'm always going to go with a coaching experience. Before I started my business, I had 10 plus years of coaching experience, right? I started from the bottom working with two and three year olds and I gradually grew year on year working and getting experience working with different different type of players my journey is i started off as a volunteer coach at a local club in my area and from there once i once i finished university i then went uh, moved to the united states where i was working for a soccer coaching company and that experience plus my volunteering opens me up to a lot of uh, different type of players working with different abilities um, working with, with really advanced players, intermediate, beginners, right? So I got lots and lots of experience at the beginning. And that experience ultimately has helped me to get success with the players I work with in my business. So first one, get coaching experience. A lot of coaches at 16, 17, 18 years old, they want to go straight into business, but they've got no years of experience behind them working with with athletes and working with players okay so it's really important get that experience in make sure that you've worked with every single age group within the the youth uh level right and that way okay once you do that then you'll be very you'll be more comfortable working with different type of clients when you get to the point where you're starting uh, your business, okay? The second one is obtain a coaching license, right? This goes kind of hand in hand with gaining coaching experience in the sense that while, while you're getting experience in coaching, you can also start to get your coaching licenses uh, as well, which 
again, it's not going to determine whether you have a successful business or not, because this is another question I get asked on a regular basis. Does having a coaching license, will it make my business more successful? The truth is, uh, the answer is no, it won't. I still believe coaching experience is on top of having a coaching license, but okay, a coaching license is experience as well. It's also education. It's also knowledge. And the more knowledge, education, licenses, qualifications that you get, right? Ultimately, the more uh, authority you start to build when you when it comes to actually working with clients uh, privately in your business. Okay, so second one, obtain a coaching license. It's always good to learn. It's always good to gain new education, um, and it's also good to stay on top with what's happening within within your industry and within this industry as well okay the third one is work with players in different training environments so work with players in one-on-one -on -one, in small groups camps clinics right when i moved to the united states the the company i was working with what they did is they they exposed me to a lot of different type of training environments that made me more comfortable working in players within those type of environments. So when I was out in the US, I worked with teams. Uh, I ran uh, coaching clinics, working with uh, co uh, volunteer parents who are head coaches at, at local clubs and running sessions for, for their teams. Uh, they, I, was, I got experience working in residential camps, uh, running skills clinics, running one-on-one um, -on -one sessions, running small group. But I was exposed to so much different type of coaching uh, and training environments that when I started my my own business, okay, I had that experience to say, right, this is what I do when I'm in this position. This is what I do when I work with players in this environment. This is what players in, in a one-on-one -on -one setting need, want, and this is how I can get results with them. Okay, so the third one, work with players in different environments this kind of goes hand in hand with number one which is getting coaching experience but very different because coaching experience is uh, the way i see it is more volunteering when you're first starting up okay once you get to you know the level where you're getting coaching licenses and now number three is you're getting exposed into different environments where you're working with players in in small groups in one-on-one, -on -one, in clinics, in camps, okay? Because how you work with a player in a one-on-one -on -one setting is very different to how you're going to work with a player in a small group environment, okay? So they're all very different, but it's good to have experience um, working in those settings. Now, the fourth one is define your preferred niche to work with. When it gets to the point where you're, you're starting your business from scratch, right? As I say to, to most of the business owners I speak with, you need to define who your niche is, who, what type of player you want to work with. Is it a player that is beginning? Is it a player that's at an advanced level? Is it a player that is aged between nine and 12? Is it a player that's aged between 15 to 18? Right, so you've got to really define what your niche is because once you start your business, right, parents are going to be looking for specific type of training for their child. So if their child is 12, they want to take them to a specialist or someone that, that is specializing in that type of age group and at that level um, type of player. Okay. So the fifth one is invest into learning the sales and marketing game. Okay. Now, if you want to just become a head coach at a club, then obtaining a coaching license is the way to go. But if you want to then learn how to start up a business, how to sell, how to market to clients, to get new clients and generate more revenue, then you're going to have to learn how to sell and market uh, to, to parents. Okay, Because you're going to have to sell your brand. You're going to have to sell to parents. You're going to have to market what you're doing, what your company stands for. Right, You're going to have to market your message. How do you make your message different from another trainer? How do you separate yourself from all the other trainers in your local city? Okay, So the sales and marketing game is the way to go if you're looking to start a one-on-one -on -one small group or camps or clinics type of sports training business. Okay, So you've got to invest yourself into learning the sales and marketing game. 
Number six, build a business plan, right? Now, this isn't, I would say, in fundamentally important, but it's always good to have a plan in place because if you don't have a plan, then you're kind of just winging it. The same way a, co a coach plans his training sessions, right? The, well, I say coach, but the way a professional coach or trainer plans their training sessions, okay, where you know, they get to that session and they, they've got a plan that they just simply follow during that session. So it runs smoothly and it runs successfully. You need the same, same type of mentality and mindset with your business, right? So what, how are you going to start the business? How are you going to scale the business? How are you going to get to the next level? How are you going to bring on um, assistant coaches? How are you going to uh, grow your business? If you're doing one-on-one -on -one training, how are you going to add an extra service? Um, how do you then expand nationally to open more training centers across the country? Right. So having a business plan in place gives you something to follow and it gives you something that you can look back on and see, right, this is where I was at the beginning. This is where my business currently is. This is where I want to get to eventually. Right. Number seven is setting up the business legally. So go back on some of my previous videos. I talk about this a lot, right? But essentially setting up the business legally is, is the way you want to set it up for tax purposes, right? So once you start to generate income and revenue, okay, you're going to have to legally pay taxes on the money you generate for your business. So speak with a local CPA, so local accountant in your area. They'll be able to direct you uh, better on this but you need to have a business set up legally it not only looks more professional but also in terms of the taxes is obviously going to help you um in the future right and also when parents search you uh, they do some research on you on you and your company they want to see that the person i'm investing into is legitimate they've they're an they've got an LLC set up or they've got a private limited company, depending where, on what country you are in the world, they have something properly set up and they're not just going to take my money and run off, right? They've got a system, they've got a system, they've got a business set up and everything is legit, right? Number eight is purchase business insurance. Again, go back to some of my previous videos. I talk about this a lot, purchase business insurance, because if, you know, you live in somewhere in the world where the climate is is not great in winter, right? It might rain a lot. It might be really cold, really freezing. It might snow a lot. You might have to use indoor space for your training. So most indoor facilities, what they're going to ask for is they're going to ask for liability insurance. Okay. So make sure you have that, that, that insurance because that's going to cover you and your business if something goes wrong while you're, you're training clients. Okay, so if clients accidentally break something or they smash a window or something gets damaged within that facility and that place has holds you liable for it, okay, your insurance will cover the costs of those damages. Okay, so it also looks a lot more professional if you've got insurance, but it also, more importantly, it covers you in the event of something, touch wood, um happening if if something does happen within within your business and when you're training your your clients right number nine is find a secure and consistent training location so somewhere where your clients come to you uh, for your training okay a lot of trainers and coaches out there what they'd like to do is they like to drive to their clients but the way i like to set up um my business and the way i teach uh, the clients that i work with is always having a secure and consistent location where parents are coming to you for the training, okay? You have a set day, set time that you do your training and parents are coming to you and you're not going to everywhere around your local area to do the training, okay? Because essentially what we want to do is we want to set up a, a consistent location and we don't want to be a delivery service, right? We don't want to be like a delivery delivery company where you're going around different parts of, of your city delivering sessions. You, you want to be consistent where you, it's in one place, one set set location, and your clients are coming to you 
for the training, you're not going to them. Okay, because essentially you're traveling different places, right? Not only does it require a lot of time on your end, but it's also a lot more expensive because you have to pay for, for gas, for petrol, um, wear and tear of your vehicle, a lot of those things, right? So secure location, consistent location, sit day, sit time where parents are coming to you for the training and you're not having to travel everywhere to put on your, your training sessions. Right, and the 10th one, once you have all those those uh, systems in place, right, we want to start now to begin to offer our services to clients. Okay, so the services could be maybe a free training session to get exposure to, to clients, or it could be a really discounted training session where you're offering it at a discounted rate just to make it more affordable and to try and get more parents to experience and build trust with what you're doing. Okay, so if any of these 10 things you need help with, or you just want to talk to me about kickstarting your business uh, from scratch, or you're at a stage where you're working with, with clients already and you want to get to the next level, right? reach out to me. Again, two ways to do that. The first one is the Zoom link in the description. Click on my Candly link. You can book a free 15 to 20 minute call. Or the second one is simply send me an email to make money coaching sports at gmail.com. I'll respond to you within 24 hours of receiving that message, right? So I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, it's a very basic breakdown. There's a lot more to these 10 points, but I just wanted to share with you a very, very basic and simple breakdown of what you need to kickstart your training business. Okay, thank you for watching. And if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all our latest content. See you in the next one.